Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I am so... I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I agree. Woo! I agree. It's wonderful to be back. We had a little time off. Great to be back. Had a couple special shows earlier this week, thanks to all the guest hosts who yeah, came in here. Uh, nice. John Stewart, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Charlemagne the God, mm -hmm. uh, Kerry Fair Washington, Washington, and Jake Tapper last Jake. night. I was the guest. That was a pretty mm -hmm. good guest. Yeah, okay, guess. good guest. Good energy. I'd book me again. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving while we were off. Uh, of course, now we kick off a, a very special season. We're all waiting for that magical man to check his naughty and nice list because Muller Claus is coming to town. <laughs> he sees you when you're tweeting. He knows your hair is fake. <laughs> he knows when you've been bad or bad because you're bad for goodness sake. You're bad. <laughs> because... <laughs> thumpity thump. Because it looks like the Russia investigation is headed into high gear. Let's start with former Trump campaign chairman and Ray Liotta in the role of a lifetime. <laughs> Paul Manafort. <laughs> Manafort, uh, he flipped on Trump months yeah, ago, flippers. a couple months ago. He flipped on the man. Flipper. But Monday, Mueller told us that Manafort breached his plea deal by repeatedly lying. What? <laughs> what? What? Are you saying you can't trust Paul Manafort? <laughs> With Man. a face like this? <laughs> mm, yes, officer. Yes, officer. The, the stolen goods are in my basement. Do go down and watch those stairs. <laughs> that dog don't hunt. Mueller's team says that Manafort's lies relieve them of all of the promises made in the plea agreement, but that Manafort cannot withdraw his guilty plea. So he's put himself in even deeper doo-doo <laughs> than before. This can mean only one of two things. One... He's afraid to rat on the Russians because he has a lifelong dream of continuing to live. <laughs> or... Yeah, he won't be around. Or... I'll be around. Yes. Got it. <laughs> yes. He's got this bucket list of not ending up in a series of buckets. <laughs> or... <laughs> Or, <laughs> or the other option, the other possibility here of why he was lying, and I can't believe I'm saying this, because uh -huh. it's just, it's crazy. He's expecting Trump to pardon him. But we heard about Trump dangling a pardon last year, didn't we? And, and why didn't Trump do it then? Well, as Einstein once said, check the <laughs> out. Because... <laughs> he said it at some point, I'm sure. Because... We just learned that while Manafort was pretending to cooperate with Robert Mueller's investigation, this whole time he was also feeding information to Trump lawyer and man demonstrating the correct way to eat a baby, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> it's like corn on the cob. Yesterday... Yesterday, Rudy said that Manafort's legal team gave him regular briefings about the questions special counsel Robert Mueller and his investigators were asking. So the fix was in, baby. It was the long con. You do this, you get a pardon. One tiny hand washes another. <laughs> Remember, Polly, snitches get stitches, but a friend o' me gets clemency. <laughs> Trump was asked... <laughs> When was he asked this? Yesterday was Trump asked this? Trump was asked yesterday whether he planned to pardon Manafort. And, and listen to what he didn't say. Let me go off the record, because I don't want to get in the middle of the whole thing. At some point, I'll talk on the record about it, but I'd rather not. So am I going to help Manafort off the record? That's a big fat yes. On the record, Manafort is a very good man. I've never met, no collusion. I weigh 239 pounds, and I have never tasted human flesh. <laughs> Unless it's very well done. Yeah. With some ketchup. Yeah, yeah. And Manafort really needs that pardon now more than ever, because yesterday, Britain's The Guardian broke the story that allegedly Manafort also held secret talks with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy. If this is true, that means the world's palest man <laughs> met the world's shadiest man. <laughs> the Guardian's... Okay. Okay. The light of... Okay. 
You know, and O'Pale. In this article, the Guardian sources allege uh, that Manafort went to see Assange around March of 2016, around the time he joined Trump's campaign. Okay, that looks bad, but only because it is very bad. <laughs> Manafort denies involvement in uh, the hack and says the claim is 100% false. Assange is fighting back. WikiLeaks tweeted that they were willing to bet The Guardian a million dollars and its editor's head that Manafort never met Assange. <laughs> I'm so innocent, I'm gonna cut your head off, mate. <laughs> and I'm gonna feed it to Donald Trump because he eats human flesh. <laughs> and... Manafort's <laughs> not the only campaign crony out there who may have been wiki curious. So was Trump confidant and open casket American Roger Stone. <laughs> <laughs> we just learned. We just learned from court filings that Mueller has an email exchange between Stone and his pal, conspiracy theorist and defrocked Oompa Loompa Jerome Corsi. <laughs> you remember that WikiLeaks released their first batch of emails during the Democratic Convention on July 22nd, 2016. Then, on July 25th, Stone sent Corsi an email that read, get to Assange at Ecuadorian Embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks emails. You don't put that in an email, you dummy! <laughs> you gotta use code names! What do you think? Mr. Bond, you are now a secret agent. Your code name is 00 James Bond Secret Agent. <laughs> then, eight days. <laughs> then, eight days. Eight days? Eight days after the first email, Corsi wrote back to Stone Word is, friend in embassy plans two more dumps, one shortly after I'm back, second in October, impact planned to be very damaging. <laughs> Not as damaging as this email will be later to me, Jerome Corsi, but still pretty bad.